In this video, I'm going to discuss the radiology of air trapping. During inspiration, this is the green arrow, air comes in and the bronchus dilates. But during expiration, the bronchial walls get closer together and the diameter of the bronchus reduces. And this is a normal physiological response. If there's an exaggerated bronchial narrowing during expiration, the patient often experiences a wheeze, and this can be seen in various conditions, asthma being the most common. One of the problems with uh, prolonged exaggerated bronchial narrowing during expiration is the development of air trapping, which you can see here. And that can be seen with the uh, bronchial wall edema seen in asthma, It can also be seen in the fibrosis of the wall in bronchiolitis obliterans, leading to this air trapping. Granulomatous involvement of the bronchial wall, as is seen in sarcoidosis and hypersensitivity pneumonitis, can lead to thickening of the bronchial wall and narrowing during expiration, leading to air trapping. And this is the classical radiological finding in hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So this is a case of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Note on expiration, the posterior tracheal wall falls inwards because this does not have a cartilage skeleton. And so during expiration, the diameter of the trachea reduces and the posterior wall falls in. The black area, or the area of mosaic reduced attenuation, is exacerbated during expiration, whereas the normal density of the lung tends to get more grey during expiration. So the air trapping is actually denoted by the black polygons in the secondary pulmonary lobules. You will also note that the blood vessels in the black areas are reduced in size compared to elsewhere. Here is more of the same. So there is an area of air trapping in the secondary pulmonary lobule and this is persistent during expiration. There's more examples of the air trapping seen in these patients. So during expiration, the mosaic attenuation is exacerbated. The importance of the small blood vessel is that in areas of reduced ventilation due to air trapping, this leads to hypoxia of the lobule itself and the pulmonary artery responds to an, uh, a hypoxic environment by uh, undergoing uh, pulmonary arterial vasoconstriction. In a similar way a carcinoid tumour could over a long time lead to air trapping. So for instance the carcinoid tumour is uh, smaller than the diameter of the bronchus but during expiration the bronchial walls come together in physiological narrowing but it causes air trapping because the carcinoid tumour then stops air coming out and that leads to air trapping which over a long time can lead to pulmonary arterial vasoconstriction. This is a, a case of McLeod syndrome. You've got a hypertransradiant lung field You've got a reduced number of vessels per unit area. You've got the impression of high lung volume. You've got a very loosened area here and a normal lung on the right hand side. A McLeod syndrome is effectively fibrosis of the wall of a medium sized bronchus following bronchiolitis as a child and it leads to air trapping. The air trapping leads to pulmonary vasoconstriction and over time those vessels fail to develop properly and patients have a small pulmonary artery and small pulmonary 
arteries in the tributaries. But don't forget, this x-ray could equally be that of a carcinoid tumour because over time, the carcinoid tumour, albeit slow growing, forces air trapping distal to the tumour because during expiration, the bronchial walls now wrap themselves around the diameter of the carcinoid tumour, forcing air trapping. And then this leads to pulmonary arterial vasoconstriction. Here is a case of focal McLeod syndrome. The lungs are completely normal with the exception of the left base where there is uh, attenuation of blood vessels. So the number and size of the blood vessels are reduced and there's an area of lucency and this lucency gives rise to um, the air trapping. So this is the same patient and it's the CT study. The CT demonstrates uh, some bronchiectasis, attenuation of vessels in terms of number and size, and we've got this uh, area of air trapping. Note that the oblique fissure is uh, bulging anteriorly because of the volume um, hyperexpansion in this uh, left lower lobe. So this is focal McLeod syndrome. So in summary, air trapping may be caused by diseases of the bronchial wall or diseases within the lumen. So for instance, granulomatous infiltration of the wall of the bronchus or fibrosis secondary to bronchiolitis obliterans will lead to bronchial narrowing during expiration, air trapping, and also a carcinoid tumour of long standing can also lead to air trapping uh, for the reasons I've mentioned. Air trapping leads to hyperventilation and ultimately hypoxia. And this hypoxia leads to vasoconstriction of pulmonary arteries, large and small, and may be short-lived or chronic. Expiratory chest x-rays or CTs are very useful in determining the cause of the mosaic attenuation. Thank you for your attention.